So the next topic is McMurray inverter. It's a single phase axillary commutated inverter. Comes under forced commutated thyristor inverters, although transistors or other devices can be employed as switching devices in inverters, they are used mostly in low and medium power applications. For high voltages and high current applications, it is necessary to connect them in series and or in parallel combinations. And this results in an increased complexity of the circuit. Fast switching thyristors, which are available in high voltage and high current ratings, are more suitable for high power applications. However, thyristor requires extra commutation circuits for turn off and the various techniques for thyristor commutation are discussed earlier in the previous videos. The link is given in the description, please go through it. Two types of commutation circuits commonly used in inverter applications are the axillary commutation inverter and complementary commutated inverter. In this video, we'll discuss about axillary commutated inverter, which is famously known as McMurray inverter. A single phase full bridge thyristor inverter, usually axillary commutated, as shown in this figure. A commutation circuit is shared by two thyristors here. Let us assume the thyristor T1 is conducting and supplying the peak load current of I M, and the capacitor Cm is charged to minus V0 with polarities as shown here. The waveform of the capacitor voltage and the currents are as shown here. Initial stage when the thyristor T1 is on, the supply is flowing through the load and getting back from the T2 to supply. In positive half cycle. When you want to get the negative output, then the supply is going to flow through T3, load T4 back to supply. So, while changing from positive half cycle to negative half cycle, we need to turn off the thyristors forcefully. So, that turning off process is known as commutation process. Let us see how to commutate the thyristor T1 after finishing the first half cycle. The commutation process of thyristor can be divided into four modes. The mode 1. This mode begins when TW1 is fired to turn off thyristor T1, which is already in conduction mode. Now, the firing of T11 causes a resonant current flow through the capacitor C and forces the thyristor T1 to fall. This can be considered a reverse current through the circuit LM, CM, T1, TW1. This mode ends when the forward current of T1 falls to zero that is i t1 equals to zero and the capacitor current rises to load current that is i c rises to i m when t equals to t1 mode 2 operation this mode begins when d1 starts conducting and the resonant oscillation continues through lm cm d1 and tw1 as t1 is turned off in the previous mode this mode ends when capacitor current IC falls back to IM, that is load current, at T equals to T2. This mode operates between T1 and T2. At the end of mode 2, D2 stops. Now, mode 3. This mode starts when D2 stops conducting. The capacitor recharges through the load at an approximately constant current of IM. This mode ends when the capacitor voltage becomes equal to the source voltage Vs at T equals to T3. So in between two, T2 and T3, this mode operates. The capacitor voltage tends to overcharge due to the energy stored in the inductor LM. Next, mode 4. This mode begins when the capacitor voltage tends to greater than Vs, that is Vc is greater than Vs and D4 is forward biased. The energy stored in the inductor LM is transferred to the capacitor C, causing it to be overcharged with respect to the supply voltage Vs. This mode ends when the capacitor current IC falls to zero and the capacitor voltage is reversed to its original value that is minus Vs. This capacitor is now ready to turn off T4. So at the end of mode 4, the capacitor is ready to turn off the T4 if T double 4 is 
for idea. Let us summarize this. When T1 is on, we see the capacitor charges to minus V0, which equals to minus Vs also. Then, when T11 is turned on in the mode 1, T1 is going to be turned off, and the current through the capacitor is going to meet the IM, and T1 is turned off. Then D1 starts conducting, and the resonating oscillation takes place through D1. Then the current IC comes back to IM, then D2 stops. Again, IC will maintain at the constant load current and the capacitor voltage is going to be equal to Vs during the third mode. And then the inductor is going to transfer the energy to the capacitor. At the end of mode 4, the capacitor discharges and comes back to minus V0 so that it can turn off the thyristor T4. All these stages with respect to capacitor voltage and current are shown here in the waveforms. Make Murray inverter available turn off time T off equals to square root of LM CN of pi minus 2 sine inverse of 1 by x where x equals to V0 by IM square root of CM by LM and V0 equals to Vs plus IM square root of LM by CM. In an inverter, the load current varies as a function of time and the commutation circuit should be designed for the peak load current. The capacitor voltage V0, which depends on the load current at the instant of commutation, increases the voltage and the current readings of the devices and the components. By connecting diodes, the excess energy can be returned to the DC source as shown in the figure with the dotted lines. A part of energy would be dissipated in the resistors R, which may be replaced by a feedback winding. This is regarding make Murray inverter. If this video is useful, please like, share, subscribe and comment. Thank you.